Some, some events in life that are just so remarkable and so needed that no matter what reality might say to the contrary, they're going to happen. Take the story of 11-year-old Angela as told by Hannick McCarty. Angela was stricken with a debilitating disease involving her nervous system. She was unable to walk and her movement was restricted in other ways as well. The doctors, well, they didn't hold out much hope for ever recovering from her illness. They predicted she'd spend the rest of her life in a wheelchair. They said that few, if any, were able to come back to normal after contracting this disease, but the little girl was undaunted. There, lying in her hospital bed, she would vow to anyone who would listen that she was definitely going to be able to walk again someday. She was transferred to a, a specialized rehabilitation hospital in the San Francisco Bay Area. Whatever therapies could be applied to her case were used. The therapists were charmed by her undefeatable spirit. In the process, they taught her about imagining, or imaging, I'm sorry, about imaging, about seeing herself walking. If it, if it would do nothing else, it would at least give her hope and something positive to do in the long waking hours in her bed. Angela would work as hard as possible in her physical therapy, in whirlpools, in exercise sessions. But she worked just as hard lying in her bed faithfully doing her imaging, visualizing herself moving, moving, moving. One day, as she was straining with all of her might to imagine her legs moving again, it, it seemed as though a miracle happened. The bed moved. It began to to move around the room, in fact. She screamed out, look what I'm doing, look, look, I can do it, I moved, I moved. Of course, at this very moment, everyone else in the hospital was screaming too, and running for cover. People were screaming, equipment was falling, and, and glass was breaking. You see, it was one of those infamous San Francisco earthquakes. But here's the thing, don't tell that to Angela. She was convinced that she did it. And a few years later, she was back in school on her own two legs. No crutches, no wheelchairs. You see, anyone who can shake the earth between San Francisco and Oakland can conquer a piddling little disease, can't they? Beyond reason, Beyond reason, Angela was able to walk again. It was a remarkable, joyous, irrational event that, that needed to happen. It was a miracle beyond reason. And I would suggest that that's what we celebrate today. Because of a remarkable, joyous, irrational event that occurred thousands of years ago, we are given hope today, in this moment. A king with, with no apparent power, riding a donkey, 
into the most powerful city of all time set the stage for the most transformational and controversial event of eternity. Without a doubt, this was, this was the moment that the people Israel had been waiting for. Their Messiah, their Messiah had arrived. One they'd been waiting for. So gathered outside the city on the Mount of Olives, the celebration began. As the procession wound down the mountain, the crowd increased in number and in anticipation. Then, entering the gates, the frenzy of adulation became overwhelming. The, the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem could not be stopped. The joy of the people, anticipating all that, that surely was going to happen with their new king, could not be silenced. Now, now those Romans would get what was coming to them. Control this crowd? No way. Jesus told the Pharisees that they were crazy to think that anyone could stop the celebration. Because you see, no one can stop the joy that comes when a person feels the release of one's soul. No one can put down the elation felt when those imprisoned by the circumstances of life are offered even the slightest sense of hope. And the hope that was offered by Jesus to the people who were at a point of losing all hope caused such a joyous response that, that if there was an attempt by anyone to stifle the words and the actions of those people, why, it would seep out from even the lifeless rocks and stones. The very stones themselves would, would ooze joy and, and would start to sing, Hosanna, Hosanna. In the movie, The Shawshank Redemption, Freeman Morgan is serving a life sentence for murder. He utters a line that speaks volumes to Tim Burton, who's also serving a sentence for murder and is relatively new to the, to the prison. Hey, look who's here. Maestro. Hey. And you, you couldn't play something good, huh? Hank Williams or something? They broke the door down before I could take requests. Was it worth it? Two weeks in the hall? Easiest time I ever did. Oh, shit. No such thing as easy time in the hall. That's right. A week in the hall is like a year. Damn straight. I had Mr. Mozart to keep me company. <laughs> so they let you tote that record player down there, huh? He's in here. In here. That's the beauty of music. They can't get that from you. Haven't you ever felt that way about music? Well, I played the main harmonica as a younger man. Lost interest in it, though. Didn't make much sense in here. Here's where it makes the most sense. You need it so you don't forget. Forget? Forget that there are places in the world that aren't made out of stone, that there's a, there's something inside that they can't get to, that they, they can't touch. It's yours. What are you talking about? Hope. Hope. Let me tell you something, my friend. Hope is a dangerous thing. Hope can drive a man insane. It's got no use on the inside. You better get used to that idea. Like Brooks did. Hope is a dangerous thing. A reference to the fact that for a lifer, hope would only cause insanity. Because you ain't getting out. For some, for some, this world, this life, this, this experience is a prison. A prison every bit as harsh and as filled with hopelessness as Shawshank Redemption was for them. When you see your circumstance as a prison, 
hope is indeed dangerous. When you live your life as a prisoner, hope is dangerous. But here's the thing. We're not prisoners. We know better. We're not prisoners. We're not lifers. We, we are livers. We, we've been given hope. We can live to the fullest because God's presence, the presence of the Holy One, is transforming us. <coughs> Filled with the Holy Spirit, we can, we can wave our palm branches today even more fervently than those early believers because, well, we know the entire story. While they could only celebrate an earthly king, we can celebrate the inspiration of hope given to us by a spiritual king. Try as we might to be somber during this time of Lent. Try as hard as we can to grieve the one who, who died on the cross. Try, try with all humility to borrow, bow our heads in sorrow as, as the stone is rolled across a tomb. We can't be made silent. We are the noisy rocks. The joy in our lives can't be stopped from being expressed. Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Blessed in heaven and glory in the highest. Hosanna. I would offer that the message that God loves us, that the sacred presence is is very much a part of us, gives us hope. It's a message that can never be quieted. I know. <laughs> I tried to quiet that message in my own life over the years. But, but even in the lifeless stone that I had become, the noise and the joy <clears throat> had to come out. There's no way God will let us remain silent. There's no way God will let us stagnate. There's no way God will allow you or, or me or anyone else to stop celebrating the life in our lives. And at the point that someone tries to tell us otherwise, why even the very stones that God created will be pulled into the act of celebration. That's why we exist as a community of faith. That's why we exist as a church we're called to shout with joy uh, the manifestation of the holy in our lives. We're called to become a community that is so remarkable, so irrational, so joyous, and so involved in, in sharing the good news that people can't help but be transformed. The good news that the sacred is in us, that we are a part of the sacred. Beyond all reason, we exist and are here waving our palm branches. Hosanna, Hosanna. We're, we're in the midst of a miracle. Well, let me rephrase that. We are in the midst of miracles, remarkable, irrational, transforming, noisy rock miracles. The miracle of living, the miracle of a relationship, the miracle of wholeness. And today, gathering together, both believing and questioning the experience of Jesus, we are participating in the miracle of hope. We're here to shout out the ways that God has blessed us through God's presence, in all of its manifestations. Here to shout out the ways we've been blessed through the presence of Jesus. We've been blessed in the power of the Holy Spirit. We've been blessed in each other. We're here to give tangible evidence of the blessings of God. We're the noisy rocks. The noisy rocks and stones singing out the hosannas of life so that others can hear and be a part of the celebration too. Just a thought.